Welcome back. My name is Nightmare, and this now is the first level yes, of Dark Souls. Indeed. Shut up. Now, we started out with the character creation made of thief, and I talked about something called humanity. Now, what was humanity? Something to reverse hollowing. What is hollowing? Let's take off the helmet. Now, if you remember, we chose a, a certain face which looked weird anyways, but now what the hell is this? Well, we are an undead and this is our usual appearance. Now if you would use a humanity, you could reverse this look and look human again. I will be showing that soon because it has some consequences if you do this. So let's pull it back on because we're ugly. Dungeon cell key. Opens this door. Alright. Now, there are these messages on the ground which tell you stuff. Right now, you can see the icon which is this guy with the helmet these are developer messages, basically the guys who made this game to tell you how this works. At first, you probably should read them, especially in this level, because they will help you if you have problems with the controls. To the controls, if you watch this video, you're probably playing this on PC. I mean, you could play it on the Xbox, but well, there is different content on the PC if you don't get the DLC for the uh, Xbox version. Now, if this game can be played with mouse and keyboard, I don't recommend it at all. You just make your life miserable and we don't want that. So, I recommend getting a controller. I use an Xbox controller with an Xbox wireless adapter for it which works like a charm, nothing problematic about it. And if you check these matches, you see the green A button, which basically means the Xbox controller. The Xbox controller is probably the best one for this. Let's continue. Smash these guys up for some extra free souls. We have here, hold left stick to and plus hold B and dash. Continue on, right stick, target, lock, release, this is the lock they're talking about, now I'm focused on this character, and this NPC, no more lock, locked on, beat him up, go up the ladder. Through this door, let's see, rest at a bonfire to recover HP. Okay, what is a bonfire? This is a bonfire. A pile of bones, dust and a pokey stick in it. Light the bonfire. Alright, now that it's lit, we can rest at it. Now, if you rest at it, right now we can't do anything. Here, you will do your level ups, spend points. Um, sort through your inventory, uh, attune spells, but we get to that at a later point when we actually can do those things. Now to note, when you rest at a bonfire, all the monsters you killed will respawn at their places. To show you that, we go back here, climb down the ladder, right there. and you see the guy where we practice the targeting, he's back, looking dumb, we just beat him up again, put him out of his, out, out of his misery, and talk. Now, head back up. You don't have to rest at the bonfire again, nothing, will, it will do nothing for you. Alright, now you can explore this area a bit, but this door is locked, we'll get there in just a second. Nothing over here. 
nothing here and some more nothing all right head up the stairs open the door come on push it push it all right big open room lots of vases remind you of something yeah smash all the things no don't smash all the things there's nothing in them now you could think well oh, nice room let's explore it some bit don't you will be surprised by this guy that's trouble as soon as we walk into the middle of the room he will jump down and try to kill us in a horrible way with his horrible weapon he's not going to so walk in don't run at that door I know it looks very tempting but just don't don't walk to the right there's nothing over there see there the lit torches that's where you want to go so you walk here don't read that it just reads run there he is looking angry walk through here door closes we're safe all right further down another bonfire light it rest at it Because resting at bonfires also restores your uh, HP and resets your spells, your Estus flasks, which we'll be getting in a second. Get your shield. Where, you might ask? Well, see there? There's Mr. Archer guy. Mr. Archer guy is a dick. And there's an item. So you want to run there. Just run out there, run into this door. There's nothing here, nothing can hurt you. There's our target shield. Equip it. And now we can use it. With left shield equipped, left button guard. Inventory management run up. Evade that. Follow him. Don't try to kill him with your broken sword. We'll take forever just pick this knife or whatever class you picked. Here will be his weapon that you've seen at the in the character creation screen. Same as the shield as you just realized. Change weapons. Now you can do this. Now I have no weapon and can go punchy punch. You don't want to do that. Same with here doesn't have anything. Shield and a weapon is probably always the most effective way to do this. Block that, get behind them, stab them. Now what I just used was the backstab. The probably most efficient way to kill lower grade minions. Alright, explore this area a bit. You don't have to after you watch this, but you can. You see this item up there? You can't get it. There's no way. You can could try to get up there. You might think it could work, but no, it's won't. It won't. And it's not really worth doing it right now. So just leave it. You will be getting it at a later point when we return to this place. Backstab and roll. Now, see this wall? It looks kind of brittle that you could probably hit it and go through. Well, you can't hit it. What you can do is go up here. See that round thing? It's your Indiana Jones death trap. Walk here, walk to the side. There it goes, breaks the wall. Now you go in here. Then you talk to this guy. I will be skipping most of the dialogue. So you just experience that for yourself and stop the video uh, and then go on when you listen to him. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say yes. Regrettably. And blah blah blah. Oh, go on. No. You get the Estus Flax. This is your health potion. Oh. The key. Now I must bid it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, as he said, um, he doesn't want to harm us. What does that mean? Now, we go out. Go up the stairs. Now you might have heard it. Uh, the stabbing sound. 
which means he just killed himself. Wouldn't we get a hundred souls for that? Now head down here. You can open this door, which we couldn't before. It doesn't do anything. You just can do it to save some time later, I suppose, if you're lazy. Now, here we have another enemy. Now we will demonstrate how to properly backstab. Now he's wailing at me, not doing much. Important, take your time with your enemies. Study their attacks, how long their attacks last, how long their reach is and so on. Now, as you've just seen, he, sw he swung at me and I took some damage through my shield. That's because this shield doesn't absorb all the um, physical damage, because it's a small shield. Other shields will block all the physical damage as long as your stamina is enough to withstand the impact. Alright, now for the backstab. You want to get behind him of course, and lower your shield. Lower your shield, get behind him and use the attack button. The left, actually right bumper. Don't use the uh, right trigger because you will then do a, a strong attack and that doesn't work. Always use the left, uh, right bumper. Always mixing that up. Alright, continuing on. Well, don't have to read those messages for you anymore. You can do that yourself. Well, hello. I hope I just pulled one of these guys because I want to show something else. Because there is also something called a parry. Or a repost. If I actually said that right. Now, the parry is more difficult to do, but I think actually does a little bit more damage if you can pull it off. So I probably will fail this the first time. So, I see. Your left bumper is your guard button, which will raise your shield and intercept the attack. Now the left trigger is your parry, which he does this animation. That means you're trying to parry. Now let's see if I can do it. Yes. After you fin did that motion successfully, you hit the right bumper to do the parry counter attack, which is very deadly, but harder to do. I personally don't ever use it, because you don't have to, and you can get really messed up if you try to do it. So I would just stick with the backstab which is a lot easier and a lot safer to do, as you can see here. Also to note, it's important that you play it smart. Like this archer guy, he could, he doesn't move from this position. So he didn't come and try to help his buddies after I pulled him around the corner. Go back here, there, now this is well, a tougher enemy sword, he will block with his shield and stuff and usually hit harder than the other guys, but with a backstab he's no problem at all. Take him out. All right. Now if you're here and you're unsure if you can beat the big guy, make sure you use one of your Estus flasks to be full, at full health. Go to two-handed mode. Now walk through here. The enemy will be Vinegas, the big boss. Don't stand up here too long, because he will come up and attack us. Jump down, use your left, right bumper to attack him, and you will do a lunging attack, lunging attack, which deals massive damage, basically 50% of the time. And then you want to stay close to him, close to his backside, because he's a moron. He might do some attacks like that, that look like sweeping attacks. You can try to evade them. Like this position where I would just kill them is not very good. Get the big pilgrim's key. Get one humanity. 
Where's my souls? There, 2,000 souls. Alright, now we got one humanity. As I said before, humanity is used to reverse hollowing. Now I could um, use the humanity. I might just do it, just to demonstrate. Alright, so I use it. Alright, now you see the double zero change to zero one. What does that mean? That means I have one humanity here. And what that does, it increases certain things. Especially um, item discovery. Like if you defeat enemies, they might drop some s items. Excuse me, their weapons, their armor, their shields, something like that. The higher your number there, the higher your chance to get those items. So it is important, well, kind of important to try to raise that number. Now you get humanity either by defeating certain enemies, like this boss, or by killing uh, monsters. And there's a special rule to that. As long as the boss of that area is still alive, you can get humanity back by defeating monsters. So farming can come into place in this game, like if you think that certain boss is too strong for me or I want to prepare a little bit more, you can just run through the area to till the boss and don't engage the boss, just run back to the nearest bonfire, rest there, reset all the mobs and kill them again, get some more souls, push up your level a little bit. Now some people might call this cheap. If you're playing this the first time, I suggest doing it a little bit just to increase your survivability. Because this game can get frustrating if you don't invest a lot of time with it, just playing it from time to time and not being really in training with it. Now as I said, these to smash these things doesn't do anything. Like I could smash all of them and I would get no items. You can roll through them, there's nothing special. Destructible environment. It doesn't do anything. There's never items in them. Well, I'm kind of lying here. There's one in well, a few instances where there is stuff in items, but you will see that that there is something in there. And later on, there will be like some crates where there will be rats jumping out trying to eat you. But that's at a later point, which will we will see soon enough. Alright, let's use that big key we got and go out this door. Walk out here. Good job, go straight ahead. Continue on. Walk. Well, you can just walk up and leave, but if you go down here, watch out that you don't fall down. Pick up this item, soul of a lost and dead. Go back up. Go over here. Now you see this nest over here? This is a special, well, trading post, you could say. Let's go near it. Yeah, some squeaky bird girl that you will never see unless, if you've seen, post in the comments. Um, you can drop certain items here, then you would basically drop out of the game, or quit and go back in, then she will... important, you need to leave the item directly in the nest, not over here, or even over here, into the nest. Just stand like this and drop it. How do you drop? You go into your items. Uh, let's see... Let's go to weapons. Straight sword hilt, um, menu, drop, drop item. No, no. Yeah. She doesn't want that, so we're just gonna pick it up again. But you get the general idea. There's some stuff you can trade here with certain items. Important to note, there's only one item. Well, no, scratch that. Each item you can trade, you can only trade once during the game. Like, for instance, you get a certain weapon, you drop it there, she gives you something. You cannot drop that same weapon again in 
that playthrough. So you can't like use it to farm some crafting materials later on or something. For a complete list uh, what to trade you can just go onto the Dark Souls wiki which is easy to find just go on Google and type in Dark Souls wiki uh, no problem. Alright that's all you can do here just walk up here towards the end and then you will be leaving the Only northern under the asylum in the ancient legends it going by big crow guy over to the land of Lordran skip that all right level up at and kindle at bonfires all right let's do that now as you've seen in the uh, at the first bonfire we visited um, there was no options just to leave. Now we have level up, which looks like this. You have all these stats, um, bleed resist, poise resist, curse resist, item discovery. This is basically increased by your humanity, as I said. Now, we will be going for a special build. I have, I have a certain uh, thing in mind that I want to do. I'm not sure about it yet, because I have another character I would rather play but it probably would give the wrong impression on how you play as a first timer in this uh, game. So I still need to decide what to do about it. Now for this, the most important stats are vitality and endurance. And why? Well, it's simple. Vitality is well, it's vitality, it's the most important thing, it's your life. Endurance is your stamina. Stamina is after your life, your other life. <laughs> if your stamina runs out, you cannot block, you cannot uh, evade roll, which is bad. Attunement. Attunement basically in means how many attunement slots you have. Here at the right, you have attunement slots 1 out of one with a little box if you can see that now if you increase this you will have more slots and what do you need attunement slots for you need it for spells pyromancy and miracles strength well it's for your strength weapons dexterity for your dexterity weapons resistance increases your resistance obviously intelligence your intelligence and faith is for the excuse me um, cleric class so basically depending on what you want to build um, you need to that's why I said in the first video make up your mind to what you want to use like at with weapons and armor if you want to use spells and whatnot and then go for that important to note people say you should try to hit like vitality and endurance at least at 30 but most say 40 40 each it sounds a lot it is a lot but we are now at level 5 depending on how you play it you might end up with a level 100 10 character at the end so you will have lots of opportunities to push these stats to where you want to, them to go now we are going to push vitality just so we can take some hits easier and this is it for this video if you like what you've seen so far please subscribe and continue to follow this series Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.